so yeah welcome i've already talked a little bit to about the idea of a live stream workshop uh let's see what else we've got um yeah so about this workshop so these days computing is everywhere and not just computer scientists in fact computer scientists are probably a minority of people who do computing so it's a tool for so many different types of science and research and well everything in life but really programming is not just about the programming there's all kinds of other tools that go along with it mainly speaking version control and while you may learn a little bit about this in a course it's not something that you might spend a lot of time on because it's not the most interesting academic skill and that's where code refinery comes in so we teach all kinds of practical skills that are necessary for people to be able to do their science without limitations and make sure that everyone can do this not just the people that have had time to learn a bunch of things themselves or take all the different classes and we have a great program arranged for this so it's been developed over many years i guess the whole the initial idea started in 2016 or so and has been slowly developed over time and now we're, we're here with almost 200 people watching on a stream isn't that cool so what is code refinery so it started off as a nordic project to teach the kinds of things i was talking about it was funded by the nordic e-infrastructure collaboration or naic and it's the funding has been renewed twice by now now we're in a sustainability phase so we're basically working to make it a more open community kind of project more on that later and you can see all of our partners here so who are we so there's some course coordinators who you've been getting emails from mainly radovan who's been heroic heroically working on managing all the registration and preparing to teach we have a wide variety of instructors so so many that it's hard to introduce them all right now but i'll introduce them as they come up we have a whole bunch of other helpers coming up who will basically be answering things in the hack and and helping around the different physical and zoom breakout rooms and also we have a bunch of exercise leaders so this is really important so in order to um, get the most impact here instead of having a big room of people doing exercises we have teams more on that later and we really like to thank the exercise leaders for making that possible so the most important thing to note is that not everything is going to be perfect not by a long shot like things will go wrong so um either when teaching or other technical difficulties but that's just life we'll deal with it actually we like when things go wrong because that makes things a little bit exciting and keeps people's attention and if it's when you're we're teaching then it shows it teaches something new how to fix problems one thing to note is that if the stream the whole stream goes down that means that my computer has crashed somehow so wait a few minutes and we'll be back up there's a whole lot to get set up each time it reboots so it might take a little while but well just hold on and we'll be back so practicalities i've already talked about the benefits of the live stream and reaching many people but there's different categories of people watching here there's people who are watching just by the live stream right now it says around 180 of them some people watch the live stream and then there's a zoom meeting for breakout sessions for the exercise sessions and we'll basically explicitly say okay now please go to zoom and work on the exercise sessions you have helpers there and then okay now come back to the live stream and we continue um we have some in-person meetups so there's at least one that's organized in finland at alto university so there there's people basically in a room and during the exercises people will work together and during the stream we watch the stream 
Actually, it's a lot like watching a sporting event or something like that. In fact, that's the exact metaphor we've gotten. There are two groups, so in-person groups in Spain. Oh, OK, nice. Are any of our Netherlands, Netherlands watchers in in-person groups? As far as I understand, it's online. OK. Well, anyway, yeah. Uh, OK, there's many parts to the workshop. So there's the demos and talking, which happen in the main live stream. Then there's type along sessions where the instructors will be doing something and you'll basically be watching and seeing how it goes. There's exercises where we will say, okay, now it's your turn. And then the stream goes silent with a sign saying it's exercise times. And then you are working on the um, breakouts, working on it um, in the groups or alone, however you would like. And we have at least 10 minutes of break every hour. And we should point out there's a lot of material here and everyone will take a different path. It's okay if some of you are here and sort of just passively watching and seeing what's there and you might come back later. It's okay if some of you are trying to go ahead and ask a lot of um, advanced questions and sort of study on your own. That's just the way that we expect this to work. But realize that we're going to be focused on sort of the middle ground here. So provide something that's engaging exercises for the big middle group of people. And there might be some times if you're really advanced, we'll say, can we come and discuss this later? Because we don't have time right now. OK, so we already discussed HackMD for chat and communications. So the basic idea is that you can there is sections and then there is um like people can ask questions and then our helpers answer like this so basically there can be multiple questions and answers being asked at once let's see if we have any right now mm. okay here's one this is so cool do you recommend switching in and out and edit visualize mode so we think that staying in visualize mode is better to reduce the load on HackMD. We aren't actually sure if this is um, actually correct, but well, yeah. I can also say that uh, we also think it's useful to switch at least once to edit mode. Mm -hmm. Switch to edit answer our icebreaker question, and then you can switch back to view. Because we have seen that sometimes the HackMD doesn't update if you haven't been in edit mode at least once. Yes, that is correct. OK, um, the edit mode switching is up here in the top if you are in uh, the browser, not mobile view. We have a lot of people watching this and answering questions at all times. So you should get an answer to most questions pretty quickly there. We will also come and um, open it up during the Q&A time and answer some on stream directly. But the corollary here is there's going to be a lot of information. So people will ask so many questions all at the same time. So you need to really constant, consciously decide when you look at it and when you're just not going to. And since it's all written, we'll revise it and post it on the website so it's available later. It's important to note that you should not include names or other identifiers in HackMD. It's public, it might be streamed, recorded, put on YouTube, posted to the website. It's better to just not put anything in there. If you're in a Zoom breakout room, you can put things like your Zoom breakout room number or name in there to tell people that you need to go there but don't use names, okay? Um, if you're in Zoom and you have some sort of problems, then you can use that and someone might watch it, some problems related to the um, Zoom breakout rooms itself. Okay, so where do we focus? So there's so much information, these live stream type alongs, all this. So the first focus should be the live stream when it's on. Then the focus should be your own work 
typing along with the live stream if we're doing that. Then the focus is the HackMD if you have a spare time or during the Q&A time if you aren't doing anything else. For HackMD, you should only need to look at the bottom. That's where all the new stuff goes. If you don't catch it on time, then you can come back later. And then as needed, the lesson web page. So we suggest arranging your screen something like this. So you notice we have this really interesting uh, portrait screen share. So the point is that is that we take up only half your screen and you have space for your own web browser and workspace and things like that. Okay, I think I probably discussed these well enough already. If you're only in the live stream, then you just watch and do the exercises as you'd like. If you're in an in-person room, it will be sort of obvious what to do. If you're in Zoom for exercises, then you switch between the live stream and Zoom. And we'll make this clear when it first comes up, so don't worry too much about that right now. If you're watching this and you haven't registered yet, I'd suggest that you go and register now um, on the website, or I guess someone else might put it in the bottom of HackMD. And then this gives us ability to uh, report better on who's watching, which is really important for us to, mm, well, for our report. How many are watching? Actually, like we don't report like names or anything. We, we just want numbers. Right, yeah. And this can really help us to find new partners and ensure funding and will basically motivate our time here. Okay, so how do we take care of each other's? So like I said, this is a live production. It's not curated. The schedule is more of a goal than what you'd consider a schedule. So we're going to adjust it to whatever the audience would like. Um, each workshop is unique and we'll try to make it exciting for the people that are actually here. The instructors and helpers aren't perfect, so no one knows everything and we're all, like, everyone here is going to learn something from this workshop. That's just how it works. So please be nice to those who make this course possible, especially the exercise leaders that have volunteered to make this possible. So the point of an exercise leader is not to know everything, but to lead the exercises and be able to keep people interested and then call others when help is needed. So we ask everyone to be respectful and helpful to everyone. So four pieces of advice. Well, okay, I've already said some of these. So everyone's at different levels and that's okay. It's okay to talk to each other and see what, you, what everyone wants to do to get the most out of this. Um, everyone's both a teacher and a learner. Take the time to check in. So in your breakout rooms, just take the time and ask like, okay, is everyone doing okay? Like. Okay, you've been a bit quiet. Are you okay with what you're um, doing? What do you like to do more? And when something isn't right, speak up right away. So best is to put the problem in the bottom of HackMD, and then we'll see, and if necessary, someone can raise it by voice right away. If there's problems you would like to raise privately, you can, for example, direct message me on the Zoom chat if you're there, or direct message in Twitch chat if I can see it, and things like that, and we can handle it. And if you wanna read more, you can read more here. So final notes. So Code Refinery is a community project. We uh, would we'll be, be very happy if you could join us, either as an individual or as a partner. You can read some of the ideas here. If you would like to talk with us during the workshop itself, you can join our Code Refinery chat. But this is more the chat for the organizers and expert helpers and so on. As a learner, you aren't expected to be here. How can you help out with this workshop? There's HackMD, so be active using all the things we've said above. You can be an exercise leader. Well, I guess next time by now. So other things you can help with are video editing. Um, We'd like to release the videos right afterwards. And if someone would like to help with that, um, I can tell you how, and that would save me an afternoon, which would be really nice. You can help us tweeting. 
give us any other feedback, or even ask in Code Refinery chat right now and see what else we have going on that you can help with. Okay, privacy is not too hard. It's basically don't put names in HackMD at any time. So the workshop, some of the partners will give certificates for the workshop and more information about that is on the website and will be updated more later.